And after spending decades on stage as a, as a duo, a double act, uh, with her late husband, Paul Daniels, the former Strictly finalist, Debbie McGee, is now set to start on her own one-woman show, exploring her entire life and career. And Debbie is setting off on her latest adventure as well as that. Uh, she's travelling down memory lane with her sister, who look remarkably light, as you're going to see in a moment, <laughs> yeah. in a motorhome. That's if they can get it going. She must get mistaken for you all the time. <laughs> oh, she does, Richard. It's incredible. I'll like never sign your autograph just, just to get rid of something. Well, I don't know. I've never asked her that. But she <laughs> used to work for a bank and be at a desk out the front. And people used to come and say, what are you doing working in here? <laughs> you know, but, yeah. We're very close in age we're not twins but um she should be the one in show business she's really, really bubbly yeah. connects with everybody everybody loves her and she's really blingy you look about a year you're, apart is that yeah right? we are yeah yeah, yeah just so. you're no flat yeah. pancake yourself oh, you're pretty pancake. bubbly yourself debbie um <laughs> uh, now i've always fancied a motorhome yeah but you think this one was a bit basic <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Well, the thing is, it's it was lovely. We had a fantastic time. Yeah. But when you're invited to go on a programme that says million pound motorhome, you have an expectation. Yeah. And so you know, we were talking about what would I be like driving a Winnebago. Yeah. I was thinking of all these American flashy things, and I've driven loads of vehicles because I've done loads of shows for the military, and they've let me drive beat. Okay. BB wagons and tanks and all sorts yeah. and you know so that didn't frighten me but parking I thought oh how am I going to park it but then we were at this beautiful hotel for breakfast you know, discussing all of this and then walked out of the front of the hotel and there was nothing else in the car park except this transit van transit van <laughs> Richard thank you for the <laughs> shoes but I have to say yes it w but we don't all want luxury do we or um, and this was <laughs> yourself <laughs> I'm being polite, but it was quirky. OK. And we, yeah. we really did have fun. And, I mean, it was a bit uncomfortable because, you know, I drive quite a luxurious car. I'm used to an armchair in my car and I'm little. And it was, you know, it was very upright. But I handled the van easily. But the back, um, where you sleep, it was like... Um, when I opened the door, it was like Barbie land. And now we've got the movie. Yeah, yeah. It was all pink. So <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, we had the giggles. You had a giggle. all day, I mean... It it gave you the chance, and you're doing it in so many ways, of, of striking out on your own, aren't you? Yeah. You're doing your one-woman show. Now, yeah. what, what, what is the nub of that? Is, it, is well, it your how you've moved forward and dealt with grief, or is it the whole life? Well, it's really... It's my life, you know, mm. being sawn in half. <laughs> because yeah. it was my life with Paul and my life now. Right. And, you know, and um, so... I, what I did was, you know, in lockdown, I wrote it and I put this PowerPoint with photos and little video clips together. And then to raise money for a local theatre, I tried it out. Right. And so I sold out. And then bits I didn't think people would be too interested in, I kind of skimmed over. And then, because I, I, I'm not that great about talking about myself because you feel like you're showing off, but mm. I have led a fairy tale life, yeah. but I've also dealt with a lot of stuff. And they all said, we didn't know you were a hostage in Iran and you well, escaped. Well, I didn't know that. And that's how I met Paul, because I came wow. back to England and needed a job. How long were you a hostage for? Um, about three months. What were you no. in, in, um I worked for a ballet company, so we were all sort of who were Western, herded into a, a block of flats. But the boys had to go out at six in the morning and literally the only food we could get was from the bakers that were on the streets, which were like flat pizzas, you know, no butter or anything, and maybe some cans of things and maybe a few eggs. And you escaped? And, and I escaped because I've always been a bit of a squirrel with money. And I'd gone there to have... I had a business plan that it had lots of money. We were being paid three times what I could earn in Europe. So I had this three-year plan that I was going to come back and buy properties so that if show business didn't work out, I'd be OK. So I had all these savings. So I paid ten times what it would normally be. I got a flight back to Switzerland. Um, but the airport was closing that day. And if anyone's seen the film Argo, that's yes. my story. Well. Even being stopped at the airport with gunmen and they wouldn't let me through because somebody had changed my visa and I ran in the end. Well, no. uh, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't have given a better example of what not to expect then. At yeah. your, uh, at your so, one and woman's all, show, all you know, how lucky I've been. We were guests of Prince Rainier of Monaco a lot at the palace in Monaco and, you know, Paul used to have fun with security oh, guards. Yeah, but you're going to have to wrap you on. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to wrap you because we want people to be. come and see you. Next Don't year. give it all away, Next Debbie. Year. But Next year. But lots of stories of what went on behind the scenes.